So let's move on, David, to your surprising guilty pleasure. All right. Which is Conair. Yes. Is that right? Yes, it is. Um, Tom, do you want to come back for this? No, because we're supposed to be rolling a package. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's go to the package. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting down to watch Con Air now. Can't wait. Absolutely love this film. Seen it so many times. Also, it's got Nick Cage in, and that's always brilliant because you know that he's just going to go that little bit mental. He's always a little bit unhinged in every performance he ever does. Always worth a laugh. Let's go. He's a US Ranger. Highly decorated. Did a little hell raising when he was a kid, but nothing serious. He's defending his wife. Got in a drunken brawl. And he killed a guy. Could have happened to you or me. After serving the last of his sentence, Cameron Poe is taking the first plane home to his wife and daughter. Today's flight is a special one. We're populating Louisiana's Felton Penitentiary. These guys are the worst of the worst. I see a lot of celebrities among us. I see 11 primetime live three Regis and Kathy Lee's and a genuine 2020 interview each. What you looking at, punk? I'm sure taking all these prisoners on a plane seemed like a really good idea at the time. But one wrong flight. Stewardess, what's the in-flight movie today? <laughs> Can ruin your whole day. Nick Cage's hair looks really the issue here is how the plane is brought down. Shoot it down. There are innocent people up there. He's got a little girl to come home to. He's been waiting for this day for eight years. What are you gonna do? What do you think I'm gonna do? I'm gonna save the day. Just like to apologise for that, one of the perils of live TV. I shouldn't have said package, I should have said feature. That's what we've been taught. David, Conair, wow. I must say, I was not expecting this from you. I was expecting some small film. Maybe, you know, it wasn't Shot Car. Maybe Shot Car came from America. Oh, this one did come from America. Why Conair? Well, I mean, I'm sort of pigeonholed a bit as sort of the art house guru, as we said earlier, which, I mean, I do enjoy the art house, but I do also have quite a passion for um, generic action films, and one of my absolute favourites is Con Air. It's like a quintessentially 90s. It, it's one of those wonderful films, isn't it? I mean, it's so 90s because, of course, you've got the wonderful, the ever fizzing with charisma, Nick Cage, the hair. Can mm. we talk about the hair in this film for a second? What is that about? <laughs> Um, I mean, to be honest, I it don't looks know. like his wig is wearing a wig. You've obviously given uh, Nicholas Cage's hair a lot more thought than I have. It's, it, it's it, not what it's a feature of it, and it's just all about. Uh, I suppose it's another example of the excess of the film. But I think you've hit the nail on the head there. That it is one of those things. It's so crazy. It's so absolutely crazy. Are we going to this link now? Right, OK. Um, <laughs> instead of that, let's keep Sorry. talking about Con Air. Yeah, so one of my really favourite things is it's got an absolutely tremendous villain in John Malkovich. You know, he's one of... A lot of these days, you get villains that are sort of watered down or, you know, it's because something that happens when I'm a kid. You've got none of this here. He's just an archetypical classic villain who's just purely evil. And, he, and John Malkovich absolutely relishes that, and it's just the, the film's greatest performance. What I do want to talk about is I want to talk about um, John Malkovich's Cyrus the Virus. I actually mm -hmm. think he's one of those classic action villains, totally up there with Alan Rickman's performance in Die Hard. How did yeah. you feel when you see that character? Is it something that you think is iconic and sticks with you? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely you know, he is just one of the all-time villains. There's no sort of, oh, he was a hero, or he did stuff in the past and whatever. There's no, he's just an all-out villain, and he sticks through that all the way through the end. There's no sort of redemption. It's just he is pure nastiness. Speaking about redemption, Steve Buscemi, that little bit with the girl, you know, when he yeah. goes to the swimming pool, did you think he was going to kill him? Kill her? Uh, no, they not said, really. They said, and I quote, his crimes are worse than the Manson family. What could he possibly have done? I don't know. I mean, that's the thing is, like, what could he have done? You just see him in this big iron suit and he felt, oh, he's got to be really nasty. And the fact that they turn him around and actually keep John Malkovich as the big villain, I think it's quite a nice thing. Yeah, I actually think he was probably one of my favourite characters mm -hmm. within it. I thought he was absolutely wonderful. I must also say, why did they send him to jail for 10 years? I know he killed that guy, but they were attacking his wife and it just seemed a little bit unfair. 
Well, I mean, it's not really a film that you concentrate too much on the sort of specific plot points, but I think that sort of takes away the charm of the excess. Please tell me, David, you didn't pay attention during a film. Anyway.